Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today, being springtime and everything is blooming, I am in San Diego at an event, but as usual, you know, I never miss my Heal Talk Tuesdays. So I just wanted to come live. There you go, hello, how are you? I just wanted to come live and today I have a guest. So today is turning into a Real Talk Tuesday and my guest is none other than Linda Fisk. So Linda, welcome, thank, thank you, you for so saying much, yes. Yes, yes. Um, and here's one of the things. We come to a leadership event mm -hmm. and then I meet another leader. And of course, I'm going to ask this beautiful soul, this beautiful spirit, who I found out to be a leader and genuine leader, to be on our show. So let us learn a little bit about leadership and Linda. Linda, thank you so much for saying yes. Thank you so much, Lisa, <laughs> for having me. What an honor. Yes, from the moment I found out what lead her ship is all about. And so please tell us a little bit about being the CEO, the founder of Leadership Global and sure. what exactly that means. Exactly. So Leadership Global is exactly what it sounds like. It is a global community of women in leadership that are creating impact and change in politics, in business, in entertainment. And our focus is creating a supportive, private, confidential community of women in leadership that lift each other up, that support each other, that are committed to advancing the success and the purpose of each individual woman that is part of this global community. And so Leadership Global really is a safe environment for women to access the resources, the tools, the connections, the networks that they need in order to accelerate their definition of success, whatever that is. So what does success mean to you? Because everybody's got a different perception of what is success. That's right. right. I think the, that success starts with understanding your unique purpose in the world. Mm. And everyone's purpose is, I think, very specific to them. It's specific to their passion. It's specific to their intent. And so for us, we want to be uh, connected to women that are in positions of leadership and we want to be able to support them. We want to be able to lift them up and champion them and really help them create impact and change positively in the world. But I think for every single person, their definition of success is born out of their passion mm. and they have to get very clear on what kind of impact they want to make in the world before they're going to be able to find success. So before. how do we know what our passion is? Yes. Because a lot of people say this is the work I'm doing and I like it, but where do we find passion from? Yeah, you know, I think that everything for me starts with understanding your values. Everything for me starts with understanding what are the non-negotiables in your life, those things that you stand for no matter what, those things that you feel like even if the house were, were burning down, even if it would cost you everything, you would never sacrifice these ideals, these mm. values. And so you would sacrifice anything, everything in your life to stand fast and to be absolute in certain values that you represent and that your brand represents. And so that begins to start to form your passion area because once you really understand the values and those things that are non-negotiables for you, that begins to point you in the direction of your passion. And then based on the passion that you have about a particular movement, a particular issue, a particular opportunity, a particular area of advancement, then all of a sudden it becomes clear to you what success begins to look like in your personal life, in your professional life, in your financial life, your social life, because everything begins to take shape and form alignment around that area of purpose and intention. Beautifully put. Since we met at SK, and SK is literally a community that is there to support, to enhance one another, finding the person or a cause, right? It's even a cause. So 
who is the person that you looked up to who mentored you into who you have become? Well, of course, I think some of our biggest mentors uh, and some of the people that really begin to transform the trajectory of our life, we often meet in young years. And so sometimes that's a parent or it's a teacher or it's um, some sort of adult yeah. that really impacts you. For me, it was my father. Oh. And my father um, really made sure that I understood that regardless of my gender being a girl, um, and I had brothers, but you know, being the only girl, that didn't limit me in any way. That that, in fact, meant that um, I had unique opportunities as a woman beginning her journey, and that I needed to ensure that I understood that I was empowered and equipped to take on any challenge that life could throw at me. And I had that belief created in me very, very young, and it's something that continues to, I think, um, support me as I move through life. That's beautiful. So, Leadership Global, when we are talking about that, before you started this, you've been a CEO in in the world and everything. By the way, for all of you, hi Kanamokur, hi Seta, hi everyone, thank you for being here and watching. We are we came out of the place that we were because it was lunch and it was going to be busy. And here we come to a brewery, found this place, and it was so quiet. Now it's become busy and it's called Half Door. And why is it that I wanted to say this? Because in life, um, in life, there are many doors that open for us. I love that. Right? And I saw this and I'm like, half door. It's like half of what we want in life, we don't step into our power. So how do we open many doors? Who opens doors for us? Is it us? Is it us, our own belief? Or do we, do we always need someone to help us go through the door and open the door for them? Yeah. You know, I really believe that no leader is able to grow by themselves. That everyone needs a community of people around them that support them, that tell them the truth, that um, help open up doors for them, that help advance opportunities for them. And it's really creating your own power tribe around you that allows you to grow, to experience new opportunities and possibilities. Mm. And so it really is through the development of a, a community, a very intentional and purposeful community around you that begins to really accelerate the success that you have in life. And so for me, you know, being part of Secret Knock and also being um, a leader within the leadership global community, I have seen over and over the power of community and the power of very purposefully and very intentionally choosing the people that you're going to have around you in your power tribe. It's not happenstance. It's yeah. very intentional and it's very purposeful to place people in your life that can help you. They can be a mentor, an advisor, a guide, a confidant. Um, they can be a client. They can be a customer. And so it's about creating that very intentional group of people around you that I think the most successful leaders have unlocked that as a key to their success. So have a clear goal, where you want to go, and then put the plan together and then slowly and gently or skyrocket to where you want with the right people right. surround yourself. And as Les Brown says, nothing in life is impossible. Everything is possible, right? Yes. So what are one of the challenges that you have conquered either personally or professionally that it would be great for our viewers? So. When I was growing up, I had a very, very pronounced speech impediment. I had a really pronounced stutter. And it was so pronounced that it was really tough for me to have a conversation with someone, to connect with someone, uh, to be able to express myself. 
And so what I found is that I began sort of a self-isolating behavior where I started um, not using my voice, mm. not expressing myself. I started isolating myself. I didn't try to create connection with people or relationships with people because it just seemed too difficult. To shy away, huh? Oh, I completely divorced myself from even the possibility of being caught in a situation where I had to speak because every time I spoke, it was so humiliating and painful and difficult that I, I couldn't I couldn't create the connection. I couldn't create the relationship with someone. It was too difficult, it was too painful, it was too humiliating, and was frustrating and awkward, and it was just really difficult. So I began to pull back from any relationships. I began to really isolate myself to prevent any further humiliation, yeah. and to prevent any further, really, um, self-image, uh, issues, right? I was already pretty fragile in terms of my self-image, my self-concept, my confidence, um, and so I began to really shun people. And it wasn't until I went through, you know, honestly, grade school, middle school, high school, all the way to college where I said, I have got to take control of this and change my life. Otherwise, I'm making the conscious choice to settle for a life that I don't want and that is not intended for me. So I took speech lessons, I took public speaking lessons, I went to a neurological counselor, I... Wow! Yeah, I went, I went to a ton of people who were uh, speech therapists, who were public speaking therapists, who were counselors, who were... Um, did you ever do Toastmasters? I did not, but I will okay. say by the end of my senior year in college, I have won several regional public speaking contests, uh, national public speaking contests, <laughs> and so it took easily five years of nonstop work um, and a lot of setbacks, a lot of failures, a lot of very difficult, painful, humiliating experiences, but I was so intent on creating a life that I really wanted, that was my purpose, that was my passion, and I knew that having this kind of very pronounced stuttering speech impediment was going to make it incredibly difficult. So that was the obstacle I focused on that I wanted to very specifically overcome. So you were determined from very young time uh, not to be laughed at, not to be shunned, not... Yeah. So, I guess every one of us has that oomph in us to say, I am good enough, I am worthy, and I want to value myself. That's right. Even if you don't. So, that in itself, now you are spreading this word, this mission, this cause on so many other women and guiding them, molding them, helping them, creating this community, which I am doing as well, my 3E event we talked about. So our 3E event, I really hope that you would be a part of oh, us. Oh, I would love that. Yes. And for all of you, look forward because a lot of that information is coming towards you and, uh, and you're gonna see this beautiful spirit, this Thank beautiful you. soul speaking to us. And so when we do all this, from high school, children can be brutal. Yes. Right? And I know I was dyslexic. And I didn't know I'm an, I have dyslexia because I am not. I have dyslexia. It's not about me. It's something I had and I can overcome. And I didn't know this until I was an assistant to attorney and I was constantly making mistakes. And he kept putting this red marker and say, fix this. And I said, but I read it three times. I fixed it. And it was still wrong. So until someone said, are you dyslexic? And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. So until someone sheds a light, we don't see our mistakes. We don't see, not that it's a flaw, it's just show me a better way, right? And I think being here, even being in this corner with all the sounds, with everything, it comes to show that 
as I promise, for four and a half years, I've never missed a Tuesday. Wow. And that's called tenacity. It calls dedication. It calls community. It says you are as important to me as I make the promise to you to come, to bring you information, education, inspiration, and for you, if you walked away with one thing today, to realize how special you are and how special you are for making a difference in so many people's lives. Yes, thank you. Thank you so, so much. So, personal, I know you're married. Do you yeah. have kids? I don't have any children um, other than when I got married, my husband had an adult daughter. And so I inherited a family through marriage oh. and I'm so blessed. She has three children. So I instantaneously became a Yay, mom grandma. and a grandma all at once. Yes. Do you have any four legged ones? I have two fur babies. Okay. Yes, I do. I love them. Because I, I'm a fur baby. I mean, I'm a dog bird mom. Yeah. So I even bought a shirt called Dog Mom. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so with that, um, would, I always ask this. Would you please complete this sentence? Linda is? Blessed and grateful. Thank you so Thank much, you. Linda. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was amazing. Thank you for being part of Real Talk with Lisa and on um, being on Tuesday. Until Thank next you. week, I bid you goodbye. Hi, Baruj. Hi, Seda. Hi, Kunar Mokur. And everyone, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.